What's up, guys? Welcome back to another Michigan Recruiting Report here exclusively on the Wolverine YouTube page. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for free. Get notifications every time we drop a new video. And liking us helps us get in front of other Michigan fans so we can continue to grow the community. Also, subscribe to the Wolverine.com for just $1 for two months using the promo code um one that's one dollar for two months using the promo code um one for even more insider recruiting information all right guys on tonight's michigan recruiting report we're going to be breaking down five michigan commits that rose up the rankings in the latest on three update so on three updated its rankings this week make sure to go check them out five commits actually rose up i always get those comments that are like on three hates michigan and all they do is drop the commit well, this time they bumped up the commits, five of them, six of them actually, but we'll talk about five of them here. And we'll start off with quarterback commit Carter Smith. So Carter Smith is one of the most fascinating quarterback prospects in the entire country. The reigning Gatorade player of the year in the talented hotbed state of Florida Carter moved up 14 spots back into the top 200 where he belongs. I really like Carter Smith. Everybody here knows that. Six foot three, 190 pounds, dynamic dual threat quarterback. And when I say dual threat, he is a true dual threat quarterback. I've likened him to Cordell Stewart. I really think he's that type of slash playmaker. Um, if Carter really wanted to, I think he could play wide receiver. I think he could play safety. I think he could play whatever you want him to play because he's that type of elite athlete. Uh, remember, Carter started off as a baseball player. His father played in the minors, and he's really developed well as a passer over the last year. I think he's making strides this offseason working with private quarterback coaches. I thought he had a good showing at the Elite 11 Orlando Regional and was absolutely snubbed for the finals. That was terrible. Uh, he was the best quarterback there. They actually invited no quarterbacks from that regional. But anyway, not to go off on a tangent, I think Carter Smith is um, still obviously one of the best quarterbacks in the country. I was very pleased to see this bump. And I think with Carter, he has a chance to rise even more in the rankings. If he, if, if the offseason works, if the offseason work translates to the field on Friday nights this year, if Carter, we already know Carter can run and pick up a ton of yards with his feet. But if he shows the ability to stand in the pocket and deliver and really shows in those improved mechanics and the improved lower body mechanics, there's a chance that Carter could move all the way, you know, into the top 125, into the top 100. Like there's so much ceiling for Carter Smith's ranking. And, you know, moving up 14 spots, he didn't really even do a whole lot publicly this offseason. Most of his work has been done in the shadows with Brock Purdy's quarterback trainer. He's currently working with Gardner Minshew's quarterback trainer. So, again, I think the ranking ceiling for Carter Smith is pretty unlimited based on what he does as a senior this year as a pure passer. We know he's going to tear it up. He was the Gatorade player of the year for a reason, but we really want to see what he does as a pure passer. All right, next up on the list is running back Jasper Parker out of Louisiana. So Jasper Parker started off as a three-star prospect, now all the way inside the top 200, ranked as the number 185 overall prospect nationally. Jasper Parker is not rated inside the top 300 anywhere else. So on three kind of getting ahead of the game with him. The thing about Jasper Parker is I don't think a lot of people have had a chance to really see him. He was a little bit of a late riser on the recruiting trail or kind of a late bloomer is a better word for that. But I think he's a, a really athletic running back, really physical between the tackles, but a guy that you can – do a lot with he can catch passes out of the backfield it can be a three down back um i think parker has a chance to continue to rise up the rankings especially on other services that are still undervaluing him with a really strong senior season and, and getting more eyes on him i think with on three they did more of a reevaluation of his tape and took a little bit more of a deep dive and, and saw what Parker brought to the table. And, you know, Tony Alford, Michigan's new running backs coach, historically has, has done a great job of evaluating talent. And I think he saw something 
in Parker and, and really made him a priority. Remember, Michigan was considered the leader for Iverson Howard early in the cycle, and Alfred passed on him to really push on Jasper Parker. So, you know, he's a guy that, again, I think will keep moving up the rankings on other services as well. Next up on the list is wide receiver Jacob Washington, also out of New Orleans, Louisiana, a teammate of Jasper Parker. So Jacob Washington fills a big need for Michigan this cycle because he is a big bodied wide receiver. Michigan hasn't landed a guy taller than six foot two since the 2022 recruiting cycle. That's a long time. We're in the 2025 recruiting cycle. So uh, Jacob Washington definitely filling a big void. And, you know, he's a guy that was a three-star early on. Now you see he's ranked as the number 246 overall recruit nationally. He's a guy with really, you know, good testing numbers. He participated in one of the Under Armour camps this offseason and posted some really good times. Um, you know, the size is definitely there. And when you turn on the tape, you know, he's a guy that is a bigger bodied guy, wide receiver that uses his size to his advantage in the red zone. He has good leaping ability, good body control, out muscles, corners. But the thing that stood out about Washington was his straight line speed. There's a lot of times he gets vertical and just kind of blows past corners. Now, he doesn't have, you know, game changing track times, but he's fast enough at that size to not just be a big bodied possession receiver or red zone jump ball guy. He can actually stretch the field as well. So I'm really excited to see both Parker and Washington this fall. Next up on the list is new tight end commit Andrew Olesh. So Olesh is Michigan's highest rated commit per on three. He got a slight bump moving up 11 spots to the number 67 overall recruit in the country. And when talking with Charles Power yesterday, we uh, discussed that he could very well be the top tight end in the country. If you look at Andrew Olesh as a pure receiving tight end, I don't think there is anybody better in America than him. You know, at six foot five, 215 pounds, he has good size, good speed at that size, uh, really flexible in and out of breaks and, you know, just a mismatch nightmare at the high school level. He plays a lot of wide receiver, mostly wide receiver. And I mean, just takes advantage of that competition out in Pennsylvania. Now, the thing that I think prevents Oles from maybe being that number one tight end this cycle is the fact that we don't know anything about him as an inline player. Like he hardly plays in that inline spot. So I think the biggest um, thing that, that Olesh has to work on at the next level is just getting comfortable being an inline blocker, running routes out of the inline position, just learning how to be a complete tight end. But in terms of being a receiving tight end, again, he is the best of the best this cycle. All right, last on the list is a personal favorite of mine, Jalen Williams, edge out of Chicago land, moving up from three star into the top 300, number 252 overall nationally now. And Jalen Williams is listed as a defensive lineman, but Michigan actually likes him as a bigger edge in the same mold as Mike Morris. Six foot five and a half, 255 pounds, great frame to add more weight. I think he'll play. Uh, at 280, 290 pretty easily, uh, has really good length. You know, he stands up for his high school team and looks great coming off the edge. I had a chance to see him play last fall and he really moved the needle for me. I've been banging the Jalen Williams drum for like a year now, and I was really, really excited to see him get the rankings bump. So he's a, a four star, you know, top 300 guy on three of the four services. The only Service still sleeping on him there is ESPN, but I think people have kind of realized the talent that Jalen Williams has. I still feel like he's one of the more undervalued guys this cycle. There's a lot to like about Jalen Williams. So he's the last guy on the list. So again, Michigan commits getting moved up in the rankings. For more coverage on the rankings and everything Michigan recruiting, head to the Wolverine.com. Also like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for free. Get notifications every time we drop a new video.